for our next project. We're back to our 1978 El Camino again. And we're going to refurbish the door panels inside and the door locks. This does have electric locks. So um, come along for the ride as we rip our doors apart and put them back together again. Our next project is to do something with these doors. We have to rip, rip these off, or take the door panels off anyway. We had them off, we had to adjust the windows for new window seals and we put them on when we actually kind of got the car back on the road. Uh, but we've got to take them off again. We were in a hurry then, we just needed to get the car running and driving, but now we're going to do some of the more in-depth things. So. Anyway, what I was saying is we need to take these off anyway because the locks, well, they kind of work, but not really. So what happens is the linkage gets old and it needs greased usually, and you can hear it still wants to work, and the relay works and the electronics work. Um, but, you know, everything's kind of stiff and tight in there, and it's just, it's not ideal. So we're going to take that all, all that apart, grease everything, make sure the window's greased up good. And probably, as part of the project, when we have them off, we'll probably do something about this deterioration on the plastic. Now, these old GM panels, this is pretty standard. This happens a lot. Um, unfortunately, it's UV, de UV light deterioration on the plastic. Because you can see, kind of here where it was covered up against the dash, where no light can get in. That's, you know, what it's supposed to look like. Then over here, you know, and as people hammer it and fingernails and hands and just wear and tear and stuff, you get this deterioration in the upper level of plastic. So what you get is kind of this thinner powdery surface that the kind of plastic top coat comes off. And there's a couple different ways to fix this. Number one way, you can buy completely new door panels. We're not going to do that because I don't have a big budget for this car, just like all my cars, I, you know don't like spending money if I don't have to. These door panels are intact, and I think they're perfectly fixable. The upper sections, the vinyl is still really nice, and the cloth is really nice, and the metal, I mean, it's, it's really nice. And all the fixtures, even the carpet down here. So I think what we're gonna try to do is, uh, we're gonna try to salvage these panels here, this surface. When we take it off, we're gonna strip these down, we're gonna take the door handles off and we're gonna clean them at the same time you get dirt down inside these uh, surfaces here because you know it's not perfectly smooth by design and over the years that gets gummy and then we're gonna see what we can do to salvage these uh, plastic pieces here um, I have a I have a couple things sometimes I do and um, it, it varies depending on the depth how far down it goes into the plastic now we already, we already, uh, I didn't show it, but I did it. I was kind of in a hurry at the time. And uh, this panel back here, we already kind of salvaged and restored. Not perfect. Uh, again, I was in a hurry with this one and I just I needed to get it back together. Um, so that you can still see a little bit of pitting in the top and everything. What we did with this one is we kind of lightly sanded. This one wasn't quite as pitted as the doors. Kind of lightly sanded. Uh, a little filling and recoating with paint and primer. Um, this, I don't know. It's pretty deep here. We might, we might just lightly sand. Now you don't want to sand too far. You can see it's kind of powdery. It's kind of coming off as I rub it. Uh, that's because the, the surface plastic is deteriorated, and you want to be careful with that. So, first step is to rip all this off. And recondition the door inside, regrease everything, make sure everything works good. So that's step one. I don't like these lock knobs because they're aftermarket. And but you know they do keep people from you know reaching down and pulling the knob up and stealing your car with a slim jim or something, but they're actually they're pretty nice. They're they're milled aluminum. I don't know. I might keep them, I'm not sure. Pull that 
window crank off and some other things and then there's plastic tabs and things and we can pull this off I actually have a special tool for this but generally when you can kind of push it in and access it like this on a car like this it's really easy to just stick a screwdriver down in here and push the tab in and push the tab in and then you can pull it off as soon as I say that then it doesn't work now my old fallback is just push the push the pin tabs off and then lose it on the ground anyway standard GM window crank spring clip you know you can push the tabs off generally these are supposed to be designed so that you can push it in pull the crank off and then it'll spring out again but make sure so that you don't lose it put this back on oh I see these window cranks are a little different they have a tab here so that you can't well now unless I put them on backwards I think I put them on backwards when I put them on you know did I? I don't know. I, think I did actually. Yeah, because you're supposed to be able to push it in like, like this. See how these tabs, there's a groove on the window crank that these ride in. And when you push this in, then they spring out. You can pull it off. I actually put it on backwards when I put it on last time. Or maybe that's the way the first person had it on. I don't know. But that's the way it's supposed to work. I guess if you put it on the other way, you can't push it on. I'm going to take the armrest off. There's two screws in here. Almost always Phillips had unless they've been replaced with some kind of aftermarket thing. So there's plastic clips. Once you have all that paraphernalia off, pull on the door. I'm going to try not to break them. I'm not real good at that part, but you know, it just it happens. So there's the top section. Oh my goodness, we got a build sheet. Well, I'll be. Really? Look at that. This is the build sheet I have been looking for for forever. It's behind the door panel. <laughs> well. Now we can see how accurate the build sheet that I assembled from the options that are on the car. Now we can see how accurate it really is. Well, so if you're looking for a build sheet in a 1978 El Camino, just make sure you look behind the door panels. Fremont, California, we know that from the VIN. Short and Field Chevrolet, Denver City, Texas. So I guess this car was ordered at a Texas dealership. Oh, what do we got here? There's the air conditioning, six-way driver's seat, electric locks, the front seat 50-50 split with the dual armrests. Uh, that's AV7, tinted glass. Maybe the back is tinted, I don't know. Acoustic, yeah. Body side molding, front floor mats. Well, those are, those are long gone. Air conditioning, dome lamp delay. I think that's been removed, actually. We don't have that box anymore. Litter basket, we have, we know it had a litter basket because the pins are there in the, in the kick panel, but the litter basket itself is gone. Dual remote mirror, two-tone. Yeah, we know it was two-tone. Uh, speedo codes there. Oh, it came with a factory tonneau cover. Okay, 2.41 rear axle. That's what I've been wondering. I haven't actually had that apart and looked at it yet. Uh, power brakes, 61 amp alternator. Cruise control, cruise control? Well, this has been modified. Somebody took the cruise control off of it. I want my cruise control back. 5.7 liter engine, we know that. Three speed auto trans. Missions, 83L fuel tank. I guess that's 83 liters. I don't know. Tilt wheel, power steering, headlamp warning buzzer. Yeah, we, we know it has that. 3D battery, front speakers, Cool horns, and then we have the light package that has like the engine compartment lamp and uh, ashtray lamp and all those little things, courtesy lamp, electric clock, yeah. U58 stereo radio. I'm not sure which one that is, but it's been replaced with an aftermarket. Uh, windshield antenna, front bumper pads, which we took off because they were just rusting out something awful. 
Uh, that's front and rear bumper guards. Um, FI body parts. I don't know. YT9. I don't remember what that code is. CJ7. Those are the rally wheels, I believe. Auxiliary light group. That's all this ashtray. That's all the starred ones there. Um, cover white. 11K. That's like a vinyl roof. No. No, that must have been the bed cover. No, because that's... I don't know. I'll have to look that up. And there's the 61 lower, 61 upper for the paint color. Camel cloth, we know that. Camel seat covers, there's the spring rates. Well, I'll be. We're going to hang on to that. I wonder if I can extract it without killing it. it. Okay, so that's the top panel. So these armrests just come off. you got to slide them forward and lift them up. They have these, this metal tab that holds on in the back. How about that? Put that there. And then you can get to, there's two screws Beverage. in here. There's two screws in here with a just terrifically big, like number three Phillips. They're already loose, I think, because I had this off before, so. I'm not sure those are the original screws. I don't know. What does the build sheet say now that we have it? Oh, I'm just, you never find a build sheet on these things. I must have had this door panel off and just completely not seen that before that's what happens when you're in a hurry now you can just kind of slide the bottom off maybe i didn't have this off before the original insulation and everything i don't know maybe i didn't anyway you have electric locks like this you gotta pop the plug off of the switch usually there's a screw on feature there's a screw on on that third tab that usually you need to take that off, but clearly somebody's been in here. A car this old, that's what you expect. We got her off. Now, this is part of that acoustic package. You want to hang on to that if it's in good shape, because if you don't have it, your door can get kind of rattly. Ask me how I know. And I'll tell you that the driver's side has been removed. And that side kind of rattles a little bit and clatters. And this one doesn't. You know, you get some noise in there. And there's metal pieces in here that rattle around. And, you know, that kind of thing. So just make sure not to trap your wire down in there or anything. So now we got the bottom off. So now we'll kind of work on reconditioning this at our leisure. And now we can get to the insides of the door. So for the electric locks, we kind of got to go inside the door. Hopefully you'll be able to see the lock, which is, you can see it move down there. That's the lock motor. Right here is the lock motor. And the linkage and everything attaches to that. And then also to the door lock, of course. So that's what we want to look at. We want to make sure that everything's lubed up and and uh, just moving freely. Um, now these are riveted in these uh, door lock motors from the factory. It's all a motor. It's not actually a solenoid. But you can drill them out. So clearly these are the, the original motors because they haven't been drilled out yet and nobody goes to the effort to re-rivet them. Um, so we're going to see what we can clean up and what we can actually grease up in here. These plastic clips, of course, you want to take out. If you can salvage them, that's great. You need to uh, put them back in the door before you install it. They, you know, twist in. But if you do enough of these things, you know what I'm talking about. You take these off and then we'll look at greasing the guts of this thing. So we pulled our connector off the lock motor here. It's a little bit corroded. I don't know if we're getting a great connection. But we know, we also cleaned up the switch contacts, but we know it's working because you can hear the relay over there. Driver's side doesn't always, but the driver's side is sometimes going up and down now, so that's something. Oh, I just needed to work that in, but uh, probably clean up these contacts. And we know the motor works because it was kind of jerking around earlier. So 
And the way this works is it just reverses it one way or the other for up or down. So if it works one way, it's going to work the other way. So we're going to clean these contacts up, put it back in, and see what happens. Good way to clean these contacts up is uh, borrow your significant other's emery board, and you can just kind of these are kind of a double a double contact here, and you can kind of just stick it down in there and just work it around between the contacts. You know. Anyway, hard to do and show you with one hand, but anyway, you just kind of stick it in there between the contacts, work it around, and get all that corrosion out of there. And we'll do that now. All right, so got our switch here, and seems to be working consistently now. So looks like it was just electrical connections, corrosion, and uh, some greasing took care of that. We did grease the assembly down in here. All right. Looks like we'll just drop our window handle in the mud. It looks like uh, this side is probably good to be buttoned up for that. These plastic pins here, I didn't mention before, these hold on your uh, insulation. So you want to try to pull them out with as much care as possible. And then when you put that back in, just put those pins back in if you can get them. Uh, that's pretty much it for the inside of this door. We got to grease the window tracks yet, which we'll do. So. The window isn't that bad, but it does have a little bit of squeaky. So uh, before we put it back together, we'll just make sure to run some grease in the tracks and grease up this assembly here. You can see it's a little rusty and it is scraping there. So we'll try to work some grease into that joint so maybe it won't squeak so bad. And then we can do the interior panel and wrap this door up. So then we can move to the driver's side door. Well, on the driver's side, our working on the passenger side seems to have loosened this one up. So, uh, still got to take the door panel off because if we're going to refurbish one, we might as well refurbish the other. So, still got to take it off, but we'll grease everything while we're in there. But looks like everything's good inside there, so I'll rip that apart and and we'll move on to the panels here. So the driver's side is, it's the same as the passenger side, but in this case, since we have remote mirrors, we have this additionally, which we'll get to, but just pull your, I already pulled the clip, but pull that off, pull these two screws out, slide this forward, and then you can take the armrest off, and you can get to these two screws, you can pull your top off, and then you can get to your electrical connector and your remote mirror connector on the bottom and then pull the plastic clips off of there. All right, so you pull this off your door handle. You look back here, you can get your electrical connector for the locks. And then over here, there's a couple different ways to take this off. You can take off these two pins and pull the whole assembly out. But the best way is there's an Allen key in here and then you can pull the center out of the uh, adjustment. So we're gonna pull this Allen key and we're gonna pull this out. All right, so once you have this Allen adjustment turned out, you can just pull this out of the center there. And this is your joystick controller for the mirror. That's just the bracket that holds it, but you can temporarily kind of sit it down there inside the door while you take your part away here. And we have the driver's door exposed. As you can see, the uh, insulation, acoustic insulation, is missing from the inside of this door. Pretty sure we had this one apart before. Um, so that was probably my fault. I probably knew I was going to have to take it apart again, so I didn't bother going to all the trouble to putting it back in at the time. And We needed to have her running and driving really fast, so we're going to get to that and uh, grease everything, and then we'll refurbish these door panels. Now, we've already adjusted the glass on these when we put the new door seals in. Uh, that was back in the day before we were filming everything on this car. And, you know, we were in a hurry then and needed to get her going. But if you need to adjust the glass, you have to adjust it, you know, forward, back, in, out, up, down. I mean, it's just every adjustment. 
and there's there's a science to it it's like magic and basically you come in here with your adjustment bolts and there's uh all kinds of slides every everything that hits the window here needs to be adjusted for in out and as far as tilt you know this way uh you know you have to adjust all these things and it's just it's hard if you've never done it before it's really difficult you got to play with it for i mean and we're talking like an hour or two you know to, you got to figure out what you're doing first of all what adjustment does what you know there's back there's front and again all these uh the rollers and the the slides and all those need adjusted because what you're trying to get is a nice even seal all the way around here because there's no upper frame on this door the glass upper part of the glass seals against the door seal so anyway there's a whole science behind that and usually there's bad words involved and you know the air turns a little blue but we're not doing that today fortunately all that is adjusted on this car this car is watertight uh, i'll cross my fingers hope it's still watertight anyway it's in good shape so the only thing that remains for this i forgot we got to pull these little clips off for the insulation that we did before we got a broken clip here i'll have to oh well that was easy and we got a couple down here well that's not even supposed to be there i don't know what's going on with that anywho we'll pull those clips out and then we'll be done with this we greased everything up everything works good we just slathered grease on the window so she cranks up and down good now i mean it's just it's just nice and smooth and that's what you want another thing to check on these windows is the felt on the sliders here that hit the glass and there's one down in there that keeps the glass uh kind of steady as it goes down in the track because there's not really a track on the front so much as there is oh uh, you know guides so if that felt's worn out you can scratch your glass because there's just metal under there so when you're running through all your checks for your door just make sure you check your felt make sure that's in good shape if not it needs to be replaced because this will just scratch your glass all the way up and down if you're riding on metal and you don't want to do that because new glass is not cheap so pull those pins and then we'll get to refurbishing our door panels so we're looking at our el camino door panels and the first thing I want to do is I'm going to take off this build sheet or try to take it off as best as possible. We've been, it's been sitting here for a couple days and we've been debating various ways to take it off. And I'm going to very, 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 very gently start working the edges, I think with a razor blade. And if that doesn't work, we can maybe get it a little wet and try to detach it from the cardboard backing here. We definitely want to preserve this i just it's really cool and you just you know the build sheet just adds an extra layer to this car so we're gonna to try to take this off before we get to preserving these door panels further so that's step one so oh yeah that lifts up pretty good that's good that's good so we got a little bit of a tear there I'll try to avoid that Back is lifted up here, and this part is lifted up. So it looks like the main adhesion point is right down the middle here. There is some glue there. Problem with these papers is they get so old and crispy that even bending them as you can see if I bend it up here it wants to kind of crack along that joint there just don't know this is it's it's tricky and the, the cardboard underneath it is not perfectly flat We did take good photos of this beforehand, so we have a preserved record.
it's just so crispy. All the heat and years and everything of being inside the door and and you kind of get either spots of glue or water and it just wants to adhere. And water this age is basically glue. Try to take a little bit of the cardboard backing with it to hold it together there. Well, we salvaged the main thing I wanted to salvage, which was this. Um, not the full list, but obviously we've got photographs of it, so that's not a real problem. The bottom line, we still have the codes for the various parts that went into it, but, you know, if this was a valuable car, this would, we would have gone to a lot more trouble to preserve it. Probably the best way would have been to put tape down on top of it and then go from underneath, but, you know, hindsight's 2020. I've never done this before, and it was good to do it on a car that isn't tremendously valuable first. Um, I don't often find build sheets, but... You can see a little bit of the cardboard backing came off of it where we wanted to keep it from tearing, so I um, wish we could have done that a little bit more here, but it's a learning experience, um, mainly for the missing parts. If we ever need to know that, we can fill that in from the photographs, so that's not too important. I'm probably going to put tape over this to make sure it doesn't crumble anymore or laminate it or something and just hang on to it. It's not a tremendously valuable vehicle, but um, it was good practice for taking one of them off. And, you know, you just don't know firsthand what's going to happen, how crumbly it's going to be until you dig into it. Some of them come off really nice. Some of them don't. Um, but anyway, we've got the most important codes here. If the car were ever become valuable, which it won't, this will be with it now. So for these panels... We aren't going to take the carpet off because it's glued on and I'm worried. I just kind of looked at it a little bit and I'm worried if we try to take it off, it's going to damage it more than it would um, if we just worked around it. So <clears throat> we're going to tape the carpet off and then we're going to kind of work these areas. We're either going to sand them down, build them up, combination of both, clean everything. We want to get it kind of smooth. And then there's a special paint you put on these panels that we will apply. It's color matched and everything. And then they will be ready to go. These panels, the upper panels, they are in pretty good shape. These sections, the carpet, whatever this is, carpet cloth. The cloth is a little bit dirty. The vinyl is a little bit aged and faded, but we're going to leave that. Um, it's, it's good enough that to restore it might make it worse so we don't want to do that we're just gonna leave it and we'll clean the cloth up and then that will pretty much be it for those polish the metal strips maybe but that's pretty much all we're gonna do with the upper panels the lower panels are the main thing here the armrests are in good shape all the metal clips are intact the insulation is intact the upper surfaces are intact and they're not too bent up so a good cleaning will pretty much fix these right up and we can apply them. Oh, foam's coming out a little bit there, but it's all right, just press it back in. And then these can all go back together just as they are. And the same thing for the other panel that's laying on the floor over there. It's pretty much in the exact same condition and everything. So the first step is we're gonna tape this up, the carpet, and everything else can then pretty much be uh, cleaned and sanded and smoothed out. We got our door panels taped up the carpet section. Um, that'll be alright. We're out here in the heat so the, gotta make sure the tape stays adhered. Anyway, we're gonna try to smooth these out, get rid of any abnormalities, and we're gonna spritz it with some paint. The proper paint actually, I think I have some somewhere. What was I gonna say? I just 
my brain these days. Oh, look, a caterpillar. Anywho, I don't know what's going on with that little guy. Here, let me show you. He's got something on his back. I don't know. Look at this little guy. I don't know what's going on. What is that on his back? I think they know. It's like he can't walk or something. I'm not sure what's going on there. It's like a fungus or something. It doesn't look like a fungus. I don't know. Parasite? Beats me. Anyway, a little intermission. Welcome to Weird Florida Wildlife, by the way. So we're gonna prep these door panels up and get them ready for a little bit of final coat and paint. And these do have metal sections on them. This is the section that holds the upper portion on. And then this metal rim goes around the switch, but I'm not gonna worry about taking this off because the switch overlaps. So also these, you can take off these if you want. I gotta wipe this door panel down, a little dirty up top, but we'll leave the screw clips on as well, but just sand and wipe and clean her up. And, and I'm doing the passenger door first because it's gonna be farther away from me. So if I mess it up, I'm gonna save the closer one for last. So then I don't have to stare at it all the time. So let's get going. So what we're doing here, uh, this, top, this top surface that kind of is made to simulate vinyl, if you can see the texture there, um, that gets brittle and weak from UV light and everything. And we're just ever so lightly removing that. Obviously there's inconsistencies and things that we need to smooth out. But the first thing I want to do is just go over it lightly in the rough places to make sure that it's not going to be too fragile. And then we'll go over it with a, a, a better grit, finer grit sandpaper. You want to pay special attention to your high touch areas, like around here, the door armrest. Make sure that those aren't all ridgy and everything, or you will feel and see that later. These are also high visibility areas, like right in here where your hand and arm sits when you're in the door and around the switch and the, and the door lever and everything. These are high contact areas. You want to pay special attention to them because those are the ones you're going to see and feel the most. Places like back here, you're not going to quite see and feel those the most, except when you get into the car, that's what you're going to be. Your eye is going to come, kind of come down the door like this. But when you're refurbishing an old panel like this with brittle plastic, just be real careful. Go real slow. Make sure to keep the, the contours and ridges that are part of the original construction. Because if you sand those away or get rid of them, you'll see it later. It'll look weird. So... Uh, we got kind of got some of our light surface removed and we can see how bad the damage is. There's a little bit of pitting. We're just going to have to go a little bit deeper in some of these spots and remove some more surface just to get it smooth. Again, we're going to lose this vinyl, this fake vinyl texture, but I'm not too worried about that because these are old door panels and we're just trying to make them look really decent. We're not trying to make them look factory. If we were, we would want to keep that factory kind of vinyl texture. Uh, but we're not going to worry too much about that. We're just going to get them looking nice and smooth. Our goal is kind of get it to make it look at to make it look more smooth like this here, where they never put any factory texture on. Um, this is where the door handle goes down for the door grip. But um, this is kind of our end goal for these areas: make them nice and smooth, and then get the color correct. So let's keep going. Okay, so we've got a lot of the, as many of the ridges out, it may still look like it on camera, but we're going to go over this with a lighter grit net paper, sandpaper now, and that'll also help reveal any inconsistencies. Uh, we did blend, blended in some of the areas where they still have texture with some of the new areas that are going to be smoother down here you just want to kind of make a nice easy transition so that it's not that visible to the eye we could sand down this whole panel and just make the whole thing smooth but again it's you know it's a kind of a panel restoration ish it's not you know it's not this car is never going to be perfect and it's not worth a whole lot of money in the end so um we want it to look good I'll let the perfect get in the way of the good so we're gonna keep going here with a lighter grit now. We're gonna move up, make sure all our blending is okay, and make sure we don't have too many divots or anything. All right, we got everything smoothed out. I think that's gonna be good enough for me. Uh, we're gonna use 
I don't know, whatever this paint is. Anyway, it is for vinyl and plastic and metal, but it's for refinishing. I don't think I'd use it on vinyl seats like that to flex a lot, but it seems to have worked pretty good on the panels we've used it for, so we're going to keep working it. I got it blown off pretty well, but... The plastic's really dry and old like this is. It's gonna suck in that paint pretty good. You might have to put on a couple coats. You might be amazed how much it just sucks in that paint. I don't know if you can see it on camera, but it's just sucking it in and you can tell because it just, it gets dull. This has a little bit of gl gloss to it when it's actually fully dry and everything, but the plastic just sucks it right in and you don't get that glossy surface till you put a couple coats on usually. Didn't do a perfect job. You're always going to have a little bit of unevenness in the texture, unless you perfect sand the whole thing perfectly smooth, but you know, factory, it's supposed to have that vinyl texture, so I'm not worried about a little bit of uneasiness. Over here I might redo it. I'm not sure. Depends how well the paint fills it. Sometimes it's hard to tell with this plastic until you get some paint on it. I know that seems backwards, but it's not like paint and metal. I mean, it's just, it's like a sponge when it's old and brittle like this. Let that dry for a bit. I mean, it's already soaking it in, but it's doing a little bit better in there. Um, I'm going to put it on pretty thick, so there are some inconsistencies, and it might look like there's some pinholes. Well, there are, um, but I'm going to put on enough paint, I think, that it's just going to soak in there and kind of cover it up. I've done this on one or two other panels with this exact paint, and it seems to work okay, so we're going to try it again. First layer of paint is on. You can see there's some inconsistencies raised by the, the paint and just the plastic interacting. I don't like it, so we got some 320 grit sandpaper here. We're going to go over that and try to remove some of those inconsistencies so we can kind of smooth it out with paint. Now we've got the driver's side panel. It's got the same deterioration and kind of scarring as the passenger side. So we're going to do the same thing to this one. So we have the door panels ready to go back on. Uh, everything's set up. We do have two plastic clips because my supply ran out so you know why not get way too many so we're gonna put the clips on the panels and we're gonna put them back on and get all the switches back in and that's pretty much it so that's the driver's door it's not perfect but it's good enough for our purposes which is daily driver quality and at least looking and working halfway decent box They work. There's still a little bit of hesitation there because she's been sitting a little while while we were waiting on some other things for other projects. But, you know, the more you use them, the better they get. So on to the passenger side. There's the passenger side. Looking pretty good, just got to get that seat cleaned up there, but you know, it's good enough for daily driver, and that's what we're going for. Something you'll notice is when you put those insulation pads back in, the uh, the doors will shut, you know, they'll sound better when they shut. You get that kind of solid sound instead of the sound of like things, lock rods and things rattling, which the, the driver's side did not have that pad before, so... You know, now it 
it sounds a lot better when you shut it. You know, nice and solid, so, you know, just a interesting thing there. Just, that's not just uh, air insulation or anything, it's sound deadening as well, so. Sounds a lot better now. Just a little tip, don't throw away those insulation pads or get rid of them. Make sure you put them back on. So that'll do it for the uh, door refurbishment on our El Camino. Um, if you stuck with us this long, thanks for watching. Uh, we'll, I'm sure we'll have more projects on this car coming up, especially, I'm not sure what we're gonna do with the seat here. It's hard to find the uh, the correct package for the dual armrest here that's you know cheap enough for my purposes, but we'll figure something out there. But um, anyway, thanks for watching and uh, Feel free to like or subscribe, comment, it's free, doesn't cost you nothing, and we always appreciate it. Uh, we'll see you next time.